Hello and welcome to this quick video tutorial of the ClinicAid billing system. Right now we're going to cover um, setting up and customizing your account for uh, quick and easy billing. Uh, when you log into your ClinicAid account, you land on your dashboard here and uh, for the purposes of this demonstration we're going to head right on over to the create invoice uh, form which is uh, the tab down from the dashboard on the left. And uh, when I click on this, um, your cursor automatically ends up in the patient information section, but we're going to head down to provider and uh, we're going to select a provider here, Doc Shivago. And uh, you can see when you've selected your provider, um, some information shows on the page here. The skill code is GP, the provider number, the business arrangement number all shows on, on um, this main page. But if you go into the advanced tab, um, selecting the provider has actually filled out a lot of this information here. Uh, you got your business arrangement number, facility number, every facility, uh, health facility in Alberta has its own health number so that's got to be filled in. Uh, functional center, exam room, that's where in the facility the uh, um, the physician saw the patient. Um, so different functional centers apply to different facilities. Uh, we have a provider number there, uh, source code, which is just a, a two-letter code, any two-letter code you want to send to Alberta Health and Wellness. It's a required value but it can be whatever you want. Um, and then the skill code box, even though we're using the skill code GP here, it's actually blank. Um, you only need to fill the skill code box out if, if you're uh, uh, sending in a different skill than the um, default skill of the provider. So if Doc Zhivago is defaulted to a GP but they're you know, um, working under skill code uh, INMD, then they would enter INMD there. So <clears throat> that's the first thing to notice about setting up Clinicaid is that you want to set up your provider information so it's going to pre-fill all of these details here. And you do that in the manage uh, or in the preferences section under providers. And you can see I have my two doctors here, Ian Medic and Doc Zhivago, and I can click to see the details. If I want to actually edit anything though, I have to click this little green uh, pencil button on the right here. Uh, when I hover over it, the tooltip says edit. So I'm going to click on that and you can see here's all the information that was pre-filled into the bill. So uh, doc first name, Shivago last name, provider um, information or provider ULI number, that's the PRAC ID, uh, source code, skill code, business arrangement, uh, the facility, preferred facility, and the functional center are all filled out there. And I can update that at any time and click update provider now. Um, sometimes uh, physicians are regularly working at more than one location, so they might want to enter two different doctors with two different sets of, of uh, provider information uh, with the same provider ULI, same business arrangement number, but maybe a different facility functional center or a different skill code depending on where they're working. Um, so you can add as many different providers as you want to the system. Um, so that's the first thing about uh, customizing Clinicaid is, is setting up your providers properly. The second thing, if I go to the create invoice form, is uh, you'll notice I have these sets of favorite codes here on the right hand side so when I put my cursor into the code box here uh, the favorite codes are showing up and when I put my cursor into the diagnostic box my favorite diagnostic codes are showing up here and so those are really easy for quick picking uh, if I just click headache it slides into this box so I go into the code box I select 03.03a it slides into the box there so setting up these favorites um, that can be done in the preferences section as well and you can actually set up multiple different groups of favorites. So um, again right now I have this set of favorites as my default set of favorites. It's showing when I come to the create invoice form. But I have other sets of favorites here as well. So these are my general favorites which is my default and I also have internal medicine and I have one for prenatal care. Um, so you can have as many different sets of defaults as you want. So if I go to preferences and I go to my default service codes that'll allow me to edit what shows here. So I'll go to service codes and you can see here this is my general set which is the one that was just showing and it's primary which means that it's going to show when I go to the create invoice form uh, without me having to click on anything. And if I click the edit button it's going to show me the different codes that are in this form and then I can click the edit here to edit any of the codes on the form. And I can go through and delete any of these. I can uh, do a search for another one if I wanted to. So. Uh, let's say I type in visit not requiring and I can select uh, uh, this 03.03 .03 PC if I wanted. Selecting it then adds it to the bottom 
and I can uh, go ahead and click Save and now that 03.03 .03 PC is now in that set of favorites. So when I go back to the Create Invoice screen you can see that new code is there and it wasn't there before. And again if I go back to Preferences down to Service Codes I can create a new service code group if I wanted another set. So if I said Test Group here I can click Create Group and then I can go ahead and start editing it uh, it's telling me I don't have any codes in the group, so I can edit it, and I can start adding more um, service codes there. As well, if I want, I can uh, click on the name of the group, and I can go ahead and change the name. But I'm just going to back out of that, because that's not something I want to do right now. So that's your service codes, and the diagnostic codes work the exact same way. Um, I have two sets of, of diagnostic codes. The general set here is my primary set, and I have a contusion set as well. But if I wanted, I could create another one for maybe lacerations, and click Create, and the group adds, and then I can click the Edit button, and then I can click this Edit button, and I can start adding diagnostic codes to it. So if I type in lacerations, I can... Uh, I must have spelled something wrong. Uh, I can then add these laceration codes if I wanted. So I'm just going to select a few. Nice, nice, nice. And so I have my four codes. I click Save. And now uh, I can click back and I can see them here. If I go to the Create Invoice form and I go to my diagnostic codes, again, my general one is the default set. And I can go to Lacerations if I want. And I can see those uh, four codes there. If I go back to those diagnostic codes um, and I wanted to make this one the primary one, then I just click Set as Primary. And now when I go to the Create Invoice page and I go to Diagnostic Codes, my primary code set now is Lacerations. If I want to change that back, I just go back to Diagnostic Codes and I click Set as Primary on the general one and now that one's primary. So you can see in that way it's a really easy uh, system for setting up your codes. Um, so the last thing I want to show you here, uh, again we've gone through setting up providers, setting up sets of codes, um, is actually setting up a default invoice. If I go to the Create Invoice page, um, the box that allows you to choose your invoice form is actually this one up here. And if I select it, I have this test invoice form that I've filled out. And uh, you can see here it's added the code 03.08A and the modifier CMXC30 and a diagnostic code 784. And without having to do anything, with only just selecting this one field, I can have all these filled out. And so that's what um, the uh, default invoices section is for. And I'll show you how that works. So I have this one called test invoice. I'm going to create uh, one called test invoice 2 and I'm going to click Create, and I'm going to go ahead and edit it. And you can see here I can add any code that I want, so 03.08B I'll do, and a fee modifier, uh, CMX, mm, actually, yeah, I'll do the CMX C31, and then the diagnostic code, I can uh, you know just select one from here. When I click Save, uh, that saves all that information into Test Invoice 2. And now when I go to the Create Invoice page, I can select Test Invoice 2, and it all fills out. Um, so some of the kind of more advanced features of uh, creating these default invoices, if I wanted, I can edit one of these forms. I can edit the name on the right here. And if I wanted, I can actually click the Add button on that on that line item, and I can add another line item. So if I also wanted to have an 86.9D, um, with a diagnostic code 784 and no fee modifiers, I can click Add. And now I have two line items that I can actually fill out at one time. Click Save. And now when I go back to my Create Invoice form and select Test Invoice 2, I have two different line items already filled out here. All I have to do is select my patient information and my provider information and click Save. When you do this, it always sets the date to today, so uh, if it's not the date of the appointment um, when you're doing the invoice, then you're going to need to edit the date here. Uh, so you can click the little Edit button there, and, and you know you could change the date to the 24th, and then click the Edit button beside the other one, change the date to the 24th. And there we go, now we have our two properly formatted line items. And then at the bottom I can just click the Save button, and uh, they'll queue up for sending in the Manage Invoices section. Um, also, 
if you're uh, creating default invoices, sometimes people like to create a default invoice for a particular facility they're working at. So I'll do this one, say facility one, and click create new form. And I'm going to edit this one. And instead of adding any code information, I'm going to add some advanced information to this particular one. And I'm going to say that every time I select facility one, I want uh, facility number one and functional center EXRM. And I'm going to click save. And what this means now is when I go to my create invoice form, if I'm doing work at facility number one, now all of a sudden it's going to fill that facility functional center information out for me. So sometimes people like to save that information in their provider details, and sometimes people find it easier if they're working at multiple facilities to use these uh, invoices, um, invoice templates for, uh, for filling out that information. Either way is fine. So uh, I hope that was useful. Um, if you have any questions, you can always shoot us a line at uh, support at clinicaid.ca. And uh, we'll talk to you soon.